Well, that's unfortunate. Hi, I'm me. I'm a farmer and I just got a new standing mixer. When you have a farm, having a good standing mixer is at most important. And when my previous mixer broke down, I couldn't go many days without one. They come in many different sizes and colors. I went with this model because it has the biggest motor in my price range so that it can do the job without breaking down. Now there are many other brands and models you can choose from. Around these parts the discussion usually is if you want a Kenwood or a KitchenAid. And I think Smeg also has uh, some nice ones. Usually if you're into design and if you're concerned about the looks and appearance, uh, you go for a KitchenAid or a Smeg. But I want to work horse and I don't really care about the looks of it. I just want it to work for, for many, many years. Also my previous one was a Kenwood. It's been in my family for several years, uh, even before I was born. I can still remember the sound of it. When my mom fired this puppy up on Sunday mornings, I wanted to sleep. Um, my mom wanted to make cinnamon buns. I'm excited to hear what this sounds like. Maybe I can pass the tradition on with uh, waking up my kids on Sunday mornings uh, with this one. Uh, this don't work anymore. I'm not throwing this away. I am keeping it. I want to get it fixed. So if you know a good place who fixes old Kenwood machines, please comment below. Of course we're keeping it. It was a, a gift from my mom to my dad in I think 1976 or 77 and and I have it on my arm so uh, of course I'm keeping it. All right so let's quickly just see what's in the box. We have the, the mixer itself, we have a dough hook, we have a splash guard, we have a whisk, a spatula, a K beater, not actually sure what these are for but uh, we're gonna find out. And this big metal bowl, 6.7 liters, and that's also something I like. This is a fairly big bowl, 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 and I like it to be as big as possible. So when I first make something, I can make a lot of it. Alright, so the two items I use the most are these two, the, the dough hook and the whisk, and that's also the ones I'm gonna use today. Cause today is Fastelaven, uh, that's in Norwegian. In English it's called... It's a Sunday, 40 days before Easter day. And it's the Sunday before Shrove Tuesday, preceding Ash Wednesday. The last day of fat eating or gorging before the fasting period of Lent. I don't care what it is. What I like about the holidays and the traditions that follow them is that it's just to have an excuse to make something good. So today we're making Fastelavens Bolle. All right, so these are the ingredients we need. Some flour, some milk, butter, yeast, some salt, some sugar, and we're gonna spice it with some cardamom. We also need an egg, so we have to go out and get one. But before we do that, I always change my pants and shoes when I go out to the animals. I don't want water buffalo shit or duck poop on my pants. And I did a video a couple of weeks ago where I showed you my work pants. And what I didn't have was uh, some working jeans. And a viewer who is a Carhartt salesperson saw that video. She don't have time to test all the clothes herself. So she asked if I wanted a pair uh, so that I can test it and uh, let her know what I think. And um, I'm gonna do that.
Okay, so I'm stopping it there before it walks off my table. The spec says that it could handle a dough on two and a half kilos. So obviously I've scaled my recipe up to exactly two and a half kilos to just to see how it performs. I don't know if my dough is too big or if I have to attach it to the table, but I'm thinking if I'm making bread and I'm just gonna leave it there while I'm outside doing chores, I can't risk that it has walk off the table when I get back. It started to smell burnt and obviously it's oh man, it's it's really really warm I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like something has melted Let's take this off. So obviously uh, That's not supposed to look like that <laughs> Um well, that's unfortunate. My workhorse seems more like a small pony. My dough is full of uh, melted plastic though. It says to hold two and a half kilos of dough. Now maybe I... Wow, it's dripping plastic. We're on 2.8 instead of 2.5. So I guess they didn't leave any room for uh, for people like me to uh, to push the limit. Hi, I'm Farmery, and I make the mistakes so you don't have to. Okay, so I'm gonna let it cool down now. Uh, I need to go and get some more flour, and I'll continue this tomorrow, and we'll see if I still have a functioning mixer or not. Now the moment has come, I'm gonna find out if I still have a mixer or if I have to knead dough and whisp uh, cream by hand uh, in the near future. I measured exactly two and a half kilos of dough. What I didn't think about was that the dough was a little too moist and I had to add some flour, which made us proceed the uh, suggested maximum weight of two and a half kilos. I don't know if it was the 300 grams alone or if the speed was too high, um, maybe a combination of the two. But now I measured up a new recipe 1.9 kilos that gives us room to add some flour if uh, the dough is too moist I wonder if the old bowl to the to the red Kenwood machine fits If it does I don't have to max out the recipe. I could just make two instead Now let's have three seconds of silence and pray to the mixture gods that it still works I have to say that that was a success. There's no smell of burnt anything and uh, the mixer is in the same spot as when I turned it on. I have it on the lowest speed. No cranking this up to 11, that's for sure. We also have to whisk up some cream and I'm excited to see if that also works on a higher speed. Before I show you how to eat a Fastelavens bolla, we need to do a final test on the mixer to see if it works on high speeds as well. I gotta say this test didn't go as planned, but at least I got some pastry out of it. Now let's see if we can whip up some cream as well.
If you like the video and want to support the channel, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm gonna try to eat this in the most Norwegian way I can. I've never really understood how to approach these. But they sure are tasty. See you in the next one.